Hello people, and welcome back to part 11 of the Noob's Guide to City Skylines. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thanks so much indeed for all the support across the series. Glad you guys are really enjoying it, including our little sort of custom uh, fishing hub, which we did last episode. But I glad you guys should take some inspiration from this and uh, bring together a little sort of fun fishing area, right? It's quite nice. Of course, many different shapes and sizes that you can take these designs in. However, in today's episode, we are going to be working on the downtown road network frame, which is one of the more fun things to do. So I like to do this in preparation for my downtown. And I think we need to do this because when we start placing downtowns, there's lots of unique buildings, lots of high density assets, and these things draw lots and lots of sims. If you were to just start building your downtown, say, on the edge of this suburb here, and you started using high density and this all of a sudden was downtown, all of that high density traffic is going to have to force its way through these road networks and you're going to have a bad time. So there's lots of important road network infrastructure that needs to happen today. Can be quite intimidating when you're doing it for the first time, especially to get it to look good as well. Why are you running? Why are you running? Otherwise, let's get started with the downtown road network frame, shall we? So indeed, before we do get started with the episode, you need to identify where you're actually putting your downtown sort of build. And for me, I want to put it on sort of this little peninsula that's coming out. Definitely use some of the beach vibes over here as well. But at the minute, a tile is not unlocked that I need. However, at the next population milestone of 30,000, we do get another tile. So 30,000 population is about a good barometer for me as to when I want to come and start my downtown build. So, let's have a talk about how we can increase our population. Of course, fresh zoning is always going to bring in new sims. So, if you have any spaces left over where you know that you want some suburbia to develop, this is the time to go and fill it out. Also, probably a little bit over here as well. We also want to bring the monorail through into the downtown as well today. We will do this. And then there's another thing we can do. If we come in and check our land value uh, heat map, obviously the green is extremely high land value. The blue is the lower areas. If you find any sort of residential buildings in the lower areas, so for example over here, you know we have a bunch of low value land over this side, the houses are just about over level 2. So start placing down some park assets in here if you want. Start to make these guys happier, they are going to level up and thus hold more sims, which for you is going to increase population. Of course, parks, services, you can start to see everyone jump up now, alright. So, go ahead and get yourself to 30,000 population, either with some expansion or leveling up existing zonings with services and parks. And then once we hit that uh, next milestone at 30k, we can pop the next tile and start to plan out the downtown roads. So, whilst my population is growing, I'm now going to bring in another monorail station to sit and converge with the metro that lies in this area as well. So again, don't be uh, afraid to delete his infrastructure. It's only a little bit of commercial zoning. It can easily be replaced. And of course, there's some pretty horrendous looking assets here as well. So I'm more than happy just to lose them. And then again, we're going to want to bring a monorail line through. Snapping into a grid with a monorail line can make it look a little bit more appealing. And then this can carry on flowing through the suburb. So of course, I do want to delete this line now. Now that I know where the station's sat. So, the monorail station is an incredibly loud public transport asset, so these guys here, these residences, probably will suffer. But again, um, the trees will function as a sound barrier. So, by all means, start to introduce some you know, rather heavily thick forested vibes around here. Maybe crack open a little bit of it so we can bring through perhaps some detail at the start of the episode. Okay, and if you are all ready to start your uh, downtime road network frame, and you know, the uh, the episode will be chaptered today, so you can skip ahead to it. But I think it'd be rude not to start out with pleasing the fence gang, right? Okay. So, kind of a little bit of a dense forest. And your usual sort of favourite detailing palettes. And can help you place some of the larger public transport assets closer uh, to residential zoning. Okay, but do, do just keep your eye on them. Again, checking your noise pollution graphic. You can see now how the noise that radiates from the back of it is ever so slightly not as intense as it is at the front, though that's because of the trees. So it does help, but you know, just keep an eye on the uh, kind of the sound complaints. 
also do it here as well. Let's try and shelter some of these people from the noise. Although there is currently a metro station here, and everyone here is fine, so it's not too much of a concern. Make some match some other sort of palms in here as well if we want. Okay, and lots more green belt to be had. It's easy, like, <laughs> one of my favourite bits of the game. So good just making these little sort of organic little green spaces, especially when they start getting uh, super walkable when the sims are picking them up everywhere, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and get that monorail line flowing down this way now, and we should hopefully see a, a pretty insane amount of walkability at this point, to be honest, as um, the metro and monorail lines converge with each other. Uh, and then don't forget just to add those stops uh, back into the line that you move them from. Okay, let's wait for a monorail to rock up and we see what we think. And there we go. What a wonderful little busy street this is, right? And again, remembering the things that we've learned about public transport throughout this series. People walking as they get off is a very good sign. You don't want them driving. It's just going to add more cars onto the road. Everyone's walking, making use of the walkability. And you can even kind of see, right, that a lot of the monorail ants are wanting to become metro ants. But they're having to walk all the way down to the pedestrian crossings to do so. So why don't we give them... A little elevated pedestrian bridge, okay? Let's come into our park stuff, of course. And we all know what's coming. Let's grab a zoo pathway, lowest elevation point, snap to an angle on a grid, and a road length as well. And we can bring it up here. Let's go for... Cost of 120, and then up by three markers. Straight across, and repeat that on the other side. Now we can observe this, and this should now siphon off a big chunk of the people that are trying to walk out of the monorail. Once the AI picks it up, of course, these guys will already have uh, pre-assigned routes. So we'll wait and see if this uh, kind of affects how many people actually walk over to the pedestrian crossing now. Which, of course, will affect traffic. People have to stop and wait. I don't think I'm actually also going to bring this down as well on the dirt road pathway. Yeah. I don't think even a little bit of fencing behind. At the metro station, to help detail, is always going to be welcome, right? Let's come off that angle snap so we don't delete the bridge. There we go. And definitely some of our content creator grasses around here as well. Maybe just a pop of colour to kind of break that, what is becoming endless green at the minute. That's a bad thing, but let's get some colour in there too, right? Okay, so a nice little way of combining two methods of public transport, really encouraging um, public transport convergence. And, you know, this is what you want to see, right? Lots and lots of people walking. <laughs> this is... Easily the most satisfying aspect of the game for me. Okay, fantastic news. So I'm about 1,500 away from that population marker now. And people don't seem to be too bothered by the noise. So if you want to kind of see what I'm working with here, and um, even these guys just on kind of the edge of the sort of red radius um, are still absolutely fine. They, they don't really care, okay? So I'm just carrying on increasing my population. Again, just want to make a point of and do continue to look out for uh, spots of walkability. Uh, there's a really nice example of it kind of happening over here now. So all this path work that we're doing and the precise placement of parks is allowing people just to move back into between different street layers now, okay? So hopefully if you're kind of following along in my style, which is kind of the point of this series, then you're really noticing a difference now with much heavier path detailing and um, just starting to link everyone through. And it's going to save you a ton of traffic as well. So uh, do let me know, actually, for those that are building along with this series, because I know that there are a few of you. Let me know if you've kind of noticed a difference in the use of your public transport and the walkability around the city. I'm always keen to know. Okay, and also just a little point to highlight the uh, really busy intercity bus terminal. Uh, 315, which is high for intercity buses. Uh, lots of people uh, coming to grab the regular bus lines here as well and heading out across the rest of the city. So very nearly there, just under 200 people, and then we can start the frame. And there it is, everyone. There is a 30,000 capital city milestone, which gives us the new tile. We also get the new campus area at the ship, some uh, policies for campus as well, alongside some new assets, including the big American football stadium, which is going to be perfect for our downtown alongside the cargo harbor. And the uh, eco-advanced inland water treatment plant from Sunset Harbor is now also unlocked as well, if you want to replace the ones that we put in last episode over here, uh, these ones. So you can switch them out if you want, you have them on lot now. But let's come into our tower view, and I want this one right here. Yes, please, let's buy that one. 
and this now opens up uh, this entire landmass for me to come and expand. This is very much where I'm going to be playing with the bulk of my high density. However, there are a couple of things that we need to acknowledge beforehand. And this is the topography. So I'm going to massively attack the beliefs and values of the topography today. Because with the high density assets, and um, especially in the vanilla game, you will be getting an awful lot of junk when you place them in terms of kind of how the some of the assets sit weirdly in the terrain. You know, you're going to be getting a lot of this cut in a way where you kind of have plazas nearby. So it's just a personal preference of mine that for at least the majority of the main downtown, I do want it to be relatively flat. Okay, everyone. So let's get into uh, the very much the meat and potatoes of today's build is setting up your downtown road network frame. So last episode at the end of these uh, harbour build, we left this road here to be expanded. What this road is now going to serve as is essentially a high speed ring road that is going to follow the curvature of the bay all the way around here. Okay. All of these roads at this point are now going to cross over the water and I basically want them to meet at the exact same height. So we're going to go for that one. Let's grab this height over here. And then I know that this is the height that I want everyone to come down at. If you are in the PC, I strongly suggest grabbing extra landscaping tools. It will make this terraforming job a lot easier and a lot quicker. But for those of us in the vanilla game, you are going to have to terraform with the manual tools. Okay, so I know this is where my bridges are going to land. Next thing I want to do is start digging out the cavity for the ring road. So again, we're going to right click with our level terrain and it's now a case of bringing this out to where we want it to sit. So again, as with most of our terraforming jobs, things will look horrifically ugly before they even begin to look good. So just bear with it. So this is what I want to do now, okay? I want to cut out this shape all the way around the bay and then we can start talking about the bridges over here. So I've now dug out the cavity of the ring road that I want to have. Again, it's kind of a little bit blunt at the minute, but of course things will be tidied up. So I'm going to use a key here. And um, if you are without the content creator pack for the keys, I strongly suggest you pick it up. They are enormously better than the regular vanilla keys and they make kind of just so much difference to your waterfronts. Um, it's linked down to Instant Gaming below. It's a super cheap pack now. So if you haven't got it, I highly suggest you go and get it. Once you do have it, you have access to a whole bunch of new keys. So I think I'm going to go for city key wide. You could also use the city key wide with stairs. And now what I want to do is just line this up in sort of nice long uh, straight sections at where the game will allow me to place them. Okay. So we're going to place straight sections first. Just line them up with the shoreline. You shouldn't have too much of an issue placing them in when the terraforming is this obvious. Okay, there's a big straight section here as well. And then over here too. And then looks like we can get one more in just along here. And then we'll end the key at this point. Okay, so now I've got nice big straight sections in. And then with a road guideline on now and a curve tool, just a case of coming in and snapping to those guidelines and completing the key circuit at all the way around. Okay, we got some nice smooth curves in here. Just placing in the straight sections first allows you to add a little bit more of your own design to it. Let's so redraw this section in here. Now we know where we're going to sit. Let's go about there, hopefully. And then this should now just hook into here. There we go. But the curve road tool and the road guideline snap is going to be your best friend for getting these things to align nicely. Okay, and there we go. Fantastic news. Now hopefully we can see what a difference that makes to the waterfront, right? And I will also put down uh, some of the garbage collectors here as well today to help get rid of the pollution that is sat in the water. Because uh, we do have quite a lot of feces. So these things, I think they're from the Green Cities DLC, uh, the floating garbage collectors, uh, they will start to you know, essentially just suck up the brown, for lack of a better phrase. So that will help get rid of the pollution. 
Now that we have the keys in, I'm going to use the two lane one directional highways from the mass transit DLC, which we introduced a while ago now. I'm going to have them three snap points away from the key. This is going to allow for some decoration opportunities here, okay? And also some uh, bridge infrastructure uh, back and to from the keys as well. And it's just a simple case of, again, lining up the straight sections first. Pretty much mimicked with your keys, again, following those road guidelines. So what this ring road is going to do is allow high speed access in and out of the downtown um, and not forcing them to take kind of the main arterials or highway. It's just going to really help alleviate traffic. And this is a concept I first sort of introduced in my Palavan series and it worked out tremendously well. It helped out with downtown traffic just so much. Okay, and same process here again now with your road guideline snap and a curve tool snapping in is going to keep everyone sort of a nice happy parallel, right? Bring these in. Nice and easy. You want to trim this one off a little bit more and come over so slightly shallower. You can just hook everyone in. And then, of course, you'll want to do uh, exactly the same thing for the opposite direction. But of course, drawing it in uh, this side. The distance you leave between the two roads is quite important because we are going to have to develop some junctions uh, on and off of this road, of course, to get people in and out of the downtown. So you will need enough room to sort of bring in like slip roads and whatnot and different ideas. We'll cover some junctions on and off the ring road today as well. So let's get this hooked in. And then we can uh, start to look at the sort of main heavy roads that are going to cross over the bay as well. So now what we want to do is we're going to start focusing on the highway roads, which are very much kind of the beef of the infrastructure. Okay, so we'll break the ring road where the highway is going to pass over because the highway will take priority. We have to get these pillars in first because it's very much the aesthetic that we're after. Okay, so we're going to start bringing out our highways with a no road guideline snap, just road length and angle. Uh, with our smallest elevation point, okay, I'm going to bring this out by 200 or 2,220. Exactly the same thing on this side again as well. Cool. So nice parallel bridges here. When you're drawing a bridge across water, it's always a nice idea to leave the game paused because as the water bobs up and down, it will ever so slightly just change the height of your bridges. So just leave it paused while we come across the water. Now, we can see as we draw the highway bridges across the bay that they get these little suspension cables on them. Okay, uh, So, very much an aesthetic of the build that we like. And then let's bring this one just to the edge of the key. That's going to be wonderful. And we can see now, right, how much more important this area is beginning to look. Much higher density, isn't it, right? So, that's, that's wonderful. I'm happy with that. Now continue to bring uh, the bridge over here. So as we touch down onto the next landmass where we know our downtown is going to sit, I actually want to bring the bridge sort of back down to earth and then elevate it up back to three elevation points, okay? So I think somewhere about there is going to do me good. And then when we bring this over now and keeping it elevated, it's going to allow us to come in with lots more sort of interweaved and, you know, crisscrossing road infrastructure keeping the highway elevated. And we can also position some of our skyscrapers right against this little piece of elevated highway, which is going to look really good in terms of just decorating your high density area. Okay, fantastic news. So you can repeat the exact same process on this side now. And again, remembering to leave your game paused and just removing any little bits of awkward sort of ring road that might be blocking your placements. And sort of making sure that your uh, suspension cables are as symmetrical as possible. And then of course you want to change your directions uh, to your chosen uh, sort of right hand or left hand uh, traffic. Okay. And then again where you have your uh, ring road that's been broken, you know, don't forget to come back and actually hook this up. Uh, you will essentially just have to bend to the whim of the highway pillars because they are sort of the beefiest infrastructure, right? But it's going to be easy to just sort of very slightly snake around them. Uh, no road guideline snapping will massively help you here. And then just squeeze it in as tight as you can. And then you'll be good and feed it back in. Okay, if you're not happy with the sort of slight angles, you can ever so slightly refine it. Back to your road guideline, your curve tool. And create those connections again. All right. So don't be afraid to just slightly amend. But it's all about bending to the will 
of the large infrastructure, because that's really what's given us the feel of high density road network here, okay? Fantastic. So, you know, I do exactly the same thing for any other connections that you have. I have a metro over here as well, so let's do the metro together. And then I'm also going to bring um, this cycling road over the bay too. And I think I'm going to let this one hug kind of the ridge as we come around the ring road rather than bringing it across the bay again. Because I think that might be too much kind of across bay action, if you like, for lack of a better phrase. So again, no road guideline, game paused, lowest elevation point as we start to introduce new infrastructure, especially over water. Okay. So just make sure you're not kind of getting too much gnarly elevation or any sort of strange dips. Um, road guideline can be helpful if you're bringing in kind of a secondary line if you want to allow it to line up to the pillars of whatever is already sat here. So I can just snap into the road guidelines of the suspension cables, okay, which is going to keep pillars nice and evenly spaced. I also bring across this sort of little caged metro thing as well. I guess that would count as sort of some sort of suspension support, right? And again, this one can now come into the downtown. But we want to make sure that we're at that three-step elevation point again, so that would be the ground level, and then one, two, and three will be there. You can snap back to the road guy line of the highway now, and then feed these into the downtown area. And again, it's going to be very much more important looking infrastructure, isn't it? Really starting to build that high density vibe now. So let's have a little look about the terraforming before we finish off our cross bay connections and then we can actually start setting up the downtown frame itself. Uh, let's go ahead and grab the layer where we want the downtown sat, which is this one, isn't it? Yes, it is. And then just a case now of pushing that terrain back up against uh, the ring road, using it as a boundary. Uh, do it quite harshly at first, and then you can always soften it out. Buy and sell soil as you need it. Okay, just kind of fill all this out as well. Get rid of some of the roughness. And fantastic. There we go. And then come back in with a little soften tool. And then you can just take a little bit of the sting out of it if you want. Maybe go for a slightly higher brush size. Okay. That's up to you. Some people might enjoy that very harsh ridge. Some people might like it a little bit softer. Everyone's preference is going to be different. You do what you like. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Okay. There you go. Even just from sort of out in the suburbs now, sort of looking over there, you can tell it's sort of quite important, right? Really cool looking. I really enjoy building these downtown frames. It's a, a nice precursor as to what's to come when you start constructing your skyline, which is easily one of the best things to do in this game. <laughs> okay. Fantastic news. So I get my uh, other bridges hooked in uh, exactly the same process here. Well, the last bridge really, uh, following the road guideline and the snaps of the uh, networks here. And then we'll be right back. Oh yes, and also don't forget to reconnect your ring road as well. You might have to do a little bit of sort of finagling here as you come to uh, come around the pillars. Again, if you are on the PC, uh, road anarchy and move it will make this job tremendously easier. So. If you haven't checked out our top 10 mods for beginners a video that went up last week, I'll leave it in the top right of the video here. But let's get it hooked in, and then we can start setting up the actual downtown frame itself. So just as I'm bringing over my final networks, I'm now encountering a little bit of an issue where I just have so many pillars that the ring road is starting to wind way too kind of unrealistically. It's just getting too curvy. So I'm going to just create a tunnel, okay? We're just going to tunnel the ring road uh, for a little bit of time until we get past all the major infrastructure. One took over 10 length, and again, we'll come down by three. Repeat that on this side again as well. Okay, and then just feed it under. Bring it back out on this side as well. And then what we can do sort of between the bridges is lots of very dense overgrowth. You know, you imagine that no one would really be walking around here, okay? So sort of spam all your heavier undergrowths around here, and then bring in lots of your sort of content created trees as well, so it feels very overgrown. Don't do it also include some rocks as well, if you like. No, so do what you want with this space. Of course, it's vibes we can expand uh, during our detail and time lapse. And then maybe they consider the placement of some of the uh, content created palms as well sort of people drive past them. Okay. You can also bring a walking pathway down here if you want. 
and we might create some sort of walking junction with the sort of pathways back and down between the little layers so that people can get onto the keys. That would be nice. Okay. Fantastic news. So three major networks all extended across. We can now have a little chat about uh, the actual frame itself. So now that you've prepared your network connections to come into your downtown area, again, whether it's over a bay like mine, you know, don't forget, just because you might not be playing on Diamond Coast, you might be on one of the other vanilla maps, or playing on a workshop map, um, you don't have to do a ring road. You, don't have to bring, you might not even have a bay to bring things over. I'm just sort of trying to sort of bring in some vibes with the map, okay? Even from over here now, it's looking quite important, isn't it? What we want to do now is bring out a layer of terraforming. So it's totally fine if you don't want to do this amount of terraforming. I realise some people don't enjoy doing it this much. But because it's high density assets, it's really going to affect the way that my build looks. I just the awful tearing that you get. You can hide it with trees. I'll show you what I'm talking about. It happened when we placed that into City Bus Station. So you know when you get the nasty tearing here that we've hidden with trees and overgrowth. It can be hidden away. But a lot of high density assets are big and they will cause this to happen a lot on on uh, uneven terrain. It's just not for me. It might be for you. If it is, then just leave out this terraforming section, okay? Just leave whatever natural landscape your downtown area already has. You know, we're not making too much of a change here. It's only kind of a, a rolling hill. We're only taking away a few contour lines. But just a general space initially is going to give you enough. Of course, we have the airports DLC. Uh, functionality of buying and selling so now which makes an enormous difference and um, i think i'm gonna do something with this little detailing bit that comes with the map as well let's not delete that we will give ourselves uh, some room around the edge of the beach where we can come down into a slope and start to hook back in with the ring road eventually okay so slope that out okay touch more over here as well Again, pushing it right up against the ring road, so we give ourselves as much room as possible. And buy a little bit more soil. And there we go. This should be good initially for what I want to do. So if you're on the PC, um, do forest brush everything away. So I've got a relatively flat landmass for what I want to be working with right now. I think I'm relatively happy with this. Um, I will get rid of all the trees as well, just so we can kind of see what we're doing. So, to delete the trees, I am going to use the forest brush, because I actually want this episode out this week. Otherwise, it's going to be out on, like, Saturday, <laughs> if I'm manually deleting every single tree. Console players will have access to a tree brush anyway, and PC players, I will leave this mod linked down below. Just go and grab it. It makes your life dramatically easier. We also cover this mod in the top 10 list that I mentioned earlier in the episode as well. All linked down below, if you want to come and get them. Okay. So, very nice. Cleared ourselves out. There's a bunch of cute little rocks out here, but I'm not really bothered about deleting them. Let's probably take away the chunky ones, if anything. So with that beach idea in mind, I'm definitely going to feed a nice, big, important six-lane decorative road around the edge of it. Okay, so I'm just going to bring out a freeform tool. And then just with these nice, long, sweeping sections, just allow this road to follow the beach. And this probably will lead out of the downtown as well, making sure that a... Angle and roll and snap is on. And then you can go over there. And whatever we end up building out this way eventually can feed into the downtown. Okay, so that's going to be nice. Let's make sure that we keep this going all the way along the beach. Just following the edge of the grass. And I can feed this back into my ring road now as well. So let's line this up. Break these guys. And then we're going to come up with a nice straight section that starts on the slope. And a curve tool with a road guideline is going to allow you to maintain some nice sensible flowy curves. Okay, so that's going to serve as a really nice sort of beachfront road, right? Sort of hugging all the way along the beach. It's going to be really cool. And then you want to do exactly the same thing that we did at the opposite end of the ring road. Just bring in everyone in here. The freeform tool to hook back into the road. And of course, just switch up your directions as needed. And that now hooks in the ring road at both ends of the downtown providing a super high speed access from this point over to here and I'll probably even bring in another connection into this road as well so people that are living here can get on the ring road as well rather than having to come all the way through so lots of uh, interconnectivity is really important for your downtown okay 
So now really setting up the frame, it's, again, it's entirely up to you. And what do you want? Do you want to kind of follow a rigid, gridded American frame? And um, if you are, Google Earth is um, tremendously helpful for your downtown road layouts. You can see now that these roads are going to start coming in. Let's bring the cycle highway into the downtown. Uh, and let's allow this to carry on all the way through the middle. And this is going to hook straight into that six lane now. Okay, so everything that you've learned about road hierarchy so far, you know, about kind of feeding people along arterials into suburbs, all of this still applies in your downtown. It's just this time the buildings are bigger and I draw more people. I think I'm happy to keep this frame running all the way along here. Again, curve tools. Going to be handy for keeping those sensible curves in. Uh, let's talk about what can happen um, with a uh, ring road junction. So we will... Again, let's find a nice place for it. Let's break off two sections here. That's going to be great. Going to come into my terraforming. I'm going to grab a level terrain. Not at the same height as the ring road here, okay? I'm just going to level this out. You might find you, have, you might have to delete a little bit of your key. You can just slightly move it back. But, you know, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah, so I'm definitely going to want to sort of pop my key out here, okay? So, let's bring this landmass out. There's various different designs of these. I will leave a link down below to the Palavan downtown episode if you'd like to get some more inspiration for sort of ring road junctions because there's plenty of them in that city. So, let's come up together and then we're going to sink down and into the earth. We're also going to do the same on this side again as well. Let's come up to here and then we'll sink down. Lining everyone up with road guidelines, of course, is going to keep your symmetry in line if that's something that's important in your builds. Road guidelines and snapping functions are going to be tremendously helpful here. Okay, and then what we can do is bring the uh, arterial road down and out of the downtown. So let's go for... See if we're going to line it in the middle here. It's going to be helpful, isn't it? Bring that out. And this can now possibly feed up to that main... Six lane road again. Okay. So we're really setting up these big boy sort of arterial frames. And allow everyone to keep moving around. Okay, again, I'm going to, might need to break off just a touch more key. But don't worry about it. It's okay. And then let's bring out some more terraform land. Let's go for this height as well. Again, all terraforming work will look horrifically ugly before you even start to look good. So, you know, don't sort of start it and then be maybe a little bit disheartened that it's not quite perfect yet. I think you have to almost accept uh, imperfection to create perfection sometimes in this game. Right. Go ahead and grab some one-way roads, just regular two lanes. We will downgrade these to highway roads in a minute. And then start feeding these down. Then grab your highways, little highway slips, and then feed them in. Fantastic. Of course, just make sure your directions are actually going the right way. And then you can do the same thing uh, on this side again as well. Bring it straight in. Let's make sure that we are actually snapped to a right angle. So with that in mind, it's probably a good idea now to maybe give ourselves a little bit more breathing room. But you know, things can change and that's, that's absolutely fine. Don't be afraid of things changing, okay? So let's delete this. We'll, again, just give ourselves a little bit more breathing room with the terraforming. Slice away a little bit of that. Grab the slope tool. Slope everyone out so we're playing with some sensible gradients. Of course, we don't want to uh, trigger the gradient place on a Monday of all days. Okay, and let's bring these down. 360 either side. And then we can grab these highway slip roads again. And keep everyone coming in. Yep, that's fine by me. And we can upgrade all these in. And again, there's lots of decoration opportunities around here now again as well. And if you do want to keep the key uh, flowing around on the same height, because we have changed the elevation of the sort of... Oh, look, there's a, there's a garbage truck. Where were you going? It's weird seeing people driving over here already. Well, it's fine, right? At least it shows it in use. <laughs> that's fine. Well, I guess they're just service vehicles, right, doing their rounds. Okay, uh, yeah, so... You can now just maybe come down to a smaller brush size and then bring all this, probably medium's actually better to be fair. 
Yeah, and then just cut away that layer that the key is sat on again, and then you can bring the key around. Equally as much, you don't have to bring the key around. If you would like to just break the key here, and then make this some sort of overgrown riverbank. Again, lots of sort of overgrowth and heavily forested vibes like we're doing where we're actually sinking the ring road as the major infrastructure passes under it. Then you can do that as well. All up to your own interpretations and designs. I am going to keep the key because it's keep on and who doesn't love that? And if it's giving you shoreline required, just uh, give it a slight amendment. And let's line up with that road guideline. Middle road. We can touch more there as well. And then we can bring that in. Back into your level terrain. And then come back into soften and just take a little bit of that harshness out. And again, there's opportunities now where we can link people back into uh, with walking infrastructure from the uh, sort of main road here down onto the keys. And the keys are walkable if you haven't played with them before. People will walk on them. But you'll definitely want to have this as pedestrian friendly road though so they can cross over and it will register the connection. Or you could do it as sort of elevated uh, pathway if you don't want to have them cross in here because this junction could get quite busy. Okay, so just a few little different designs and sort of improvisations there as to how you can get people on and off the ring. Again, I will leave Palavin's Ring Road episode linked down below so you can see what sort of junctions we made on that Ring Road. Uh, but there's endless variations. Have a look around your own cities. If your city has a Ring Road, you know, how do people get on and off it? All things to factor in. So now we can come back onto our road length and angle snaps, which is what I'm really going to use for the bulk of this. And remembering our things that we picked up in City Skylines, we don't want a junction here, because these are way too close together. Alright, so let's give ourselves that breathing room. Let's maybe come on for the road guideline so we can see those blue circles. And then let's go for that. Okay, and then come off the road guideline as we start to draw it out. And then these connections can now be brought back into play. If you do want to realign with some of the ring road infrastructure, then of course you can. Let me bring it out this way. Okay, so we've created a ring road junction and have something of a main sort of arterial box here, right, for where everything is going to sit. It's going to be happy. Let's factor in the other connections now. Let's come into our highway, and again, what you want to do with your highway is really up to you. If you want it to come back down to ground now and just settle back into road and bring it into the downtown, or do you want to keep some sort of element of elevated highway running through your downtown, because it can be very much an appreciated decoration aesthetic, okay? And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to allow it to sort of curve around and then end in the downtown here if possible. So I want to snap a little sort of guide road off of the frame so I know that I'm snapped to 90 degrees. So let's go for about there. Back into that highway road. Elevate it up by three points. Which is going to allow us to bring road network underneath it. And then we'll save our distance right there. Now level though. There we go. And then bring it over your roads. Start bringing these ones down as well. Exactly the same process that we've been doing. And with all the other road network infrastructure, it's a case of a road guideline snap with a curve tool is going to keep everyone sort of sensibly spaced, okay? If you want that to be a little bit sort of a shallow, let's bring these straight sections down a touch. Okay. And then feed everyone in. And everyone's going to be happy. Of course, directionality is immensely important. Don't forget to switch it around. So let's prepare a exit for the highway. So I'm going to bring in... Well, we can remove this dirt frame now. And then let's go for... Another road here. Let's use a different type of road this time. Let go for one of the tree ones. And again, we'll feed this back up to that main sort of beachfront six lane. And then the highway will now uh, pass over this road. Or right here. Cool. Bring it over as well. And I'll just leave them at a dead end there for right now. So we can just do a really simple uh, entry and exit point into the road here. Let's come in with some one lane or one way uh, grassy roads here and do a distance of 720. 
I guess do this on each side, remembering that we're saving a, a tile between the highway and the new road, which is fine. And you can see how this is going to work, right? This is now going to come over. I'll kind of highlight the point of just what having an elevated highway through your downtown will do for the build and um, really affects it. So what's coming with uh, some of these roads? You can come out by 10, okay, 620, and then just a nice sensible place to curve these back in. It's going to be great, right? And you can just redraw those measurements. <laughs> That's going to give you a really basic uh, highway on and off system for the downtown area. Okay, so you do want to provide multiple of these. I definitely wouldn't suggest just ending it in one place because, again, that's just going to cause people to bottleneck, all right? Which isn't really a fun time for any of us. So, to end the highway, again, why don't we do something uh, slightly more interesting? Let's bring our highway out of touch and let's get a nice big uh, 10 curve here, all right? Bring this down and then we're going to feed this straight into the road like that. Okay, it's forest brush, a touch of this forest away so we can see what we're doing a little bit easier. And again, we can perhaps bring out another 10 curve. Maybe start coming down a couple of elevation points as we descend down this way. And then another 10 curve. Can feed us back into the road and allow this to come back up like that. Okay. Wonderful. And then just to hammer home the point of what this will do now, let's go ahead and place in a very temporary skyscraper. Let's go ahead and grab one of our favorites, one of the Japanese content creator ones. You place that in, and then as your skyline begins to climb around it now, all this elevated road infrastructure is really going to help with all the high density vibes, okay? So it's not important, it's not absolutely essential that you bring a highway through a downtown like this, you know, Palavans didn't have it, Novarius did, Novarius had that big highway going through the downtown. But if your map allows for it and you have the room and indeed the inspiration to put something together like this, then absolutely go for it. You will uh, really come to appreciate your downtown a little bit more. Okay, that big tower of dust. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, so let's start working on some of the smaller sort of local roads now. The exact same premise is going to follow here for everything we've been doing in the game so far. Start developing some sort of frontage networks and think, you know, very tightly here. Start playing with bringing in your zonable spaces very tight together. Because again, all your buildings and assets are going to be sat within these frames. And if there's any sort of open spaces, then that usually means there's going to be something of an open space within your skyline as well. Which can be acceptable and appreciated sometimes. But uh, it's not really what I want. So let's start bringing down some frontage networks here. Again, opportunities for detail in here. Perhaps as we come into this section, where we're saving the tile space between, we can grab one of our content creator trees and perhaps upgrade it. Maybe go for one of these. Okay. So all these little local frames can now be expanded, and Google Earth is really is your best friend for stuff like this. Uh, let's also kind of tried to break away from the grid, right? You know, not everyone's a fan of the grid, and I think the grid has its place in the game, but let's try to do something a little bit different. Let's start bringing out some curvature here. And then just keeping it flowing until we come to a point where we know we can snap to a road guideline and bring in a relatively sensible curve. Perhaps over there. Okay. And you're now just going to break that relentless box, if you like, for lack of a better phrase. I think that's going to be okay. Wonderful. So we do have more networks, of course. Let's now bring this one uh, under our highway again. We can bring it straight under. If the pillars are giving you grief, then just break a little bit of it. Uh, and then you will just allow the new road to come through and then just redraw your highway around the new road. It's also terraform a little bit as well. Okay, so you can see now, hopefully, the benefit of terraforming out this sort of main plateau of the downtown, if you like. And again, let's align with the road guideline of the highway. We'll go for a treed road this time. Okay, let's feed that through. This can now 
uh, meander alongside the ring road. Some nice big curves in here. I'm thinking maybe our airport DLC airport is going to sit here, maybe. Sort of along this stretch, big runway there. It is actually next in the release order, but the city uh, isn't really ready for an airport yet. So we're doing the downtown frame instead. Okay, so that can now be fed into the downtown. And again, let's bring in perhaps some nicer curves. All right, let's go for one like that. I'll grade that one. And then the highway can now be drawn back over the top as well. I do apologize if this isn't really your kind of episode. It's very sort of network uh, intensive. But it's important, especially if you do want to have sort of a really dedicated uh, high density area. And uh, preparing for it is uh, a big part of building one of these things. Okay, so we're now starting to see in all these networks coming in. Let's start bringing in that first public transport network too. Let's go ahead and grab the metro. And let's bring you straight across. And, you know, this is probably going to feed into some kind of centralized transport hub now, you imagine. As we begin to possibly plan out where that could sit. Again, fairly centrally is always going to be appreciated. And I'm probably imagining it to sit me within one of these squares here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's bring in that metro connection. And what is it we need to be? It's like a tile away, isn't it? Yes, it is. So let's snap into the grid. And then we know that our stations are going to align pretty much perfectly with this one. If the slope is correct anyway. We should be at the same angle there. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. That's fine. Cool. So happy with that. Delete the station now because I don't actually want that station there. It's just to make sure that we're on the same angle so we're not going to have any weird sort of bent out metro lines like that. Okay, I can leave that as a dead end now. I know I maybe want to feed some sort of major public transport center into this area. And again, let's not also forget our monorail and also factor in your underground metro connections as well. Um, if you want to have a little look at those temporarily whilst we remember, let's come underground. So currently the only underground metro station we have is this ring that's currently serving the initial start of the suburb. So I feel like this would be a good point to now introduce another underground metro network again, perhaps near one of the other stations where we can now have metro convergence, right? So why don't we have it along this main road here? Let's place it. We're going to have to lose a little bit of our buildings, but that's absolutely fine. Again, there's no problem if infrastructure or ideas change. Go ahead and chuck that one in there, and then let's bring in a new metro connection now. That's going to allow people to move into the high density area uh, without having to drive. Yeah, I think I'll actually bring this one around to uh, Hug Bay as it comes under the road. And then with that in mind, it also is going to allow us to place in a few metro stations a little bit easier as it follows this main arterial uh, into the town. You know, don't be afraid to throw in some of your content creator uh, metro stations here, if indeed you are playing with them. We can maybe drop one in uh, right there. Okay, and then use that as a point now to where the metro line can come and connect in with the rest of the network. Okay, and probably another one. Yeah, probably about there as well, right? Let people stop just before they get into downtown if they want and access whatever zonings will sit over here. Fantastic. So I think in a similar sort of premise to what we did over here, because this metro line has worked uh, tremendously well. It's a, it's a really busy one. Um, especially find the, the underground station and the campus is getting a lot of use. And um, of course, we've seen this one today, which is just insane now. <laughs> this metro station, you know, 335. It's, uh, it's a crazy busy. Also the one over by the industrial point as well. You know, this one's getting a lot of use, so this whole sort of ring system or ring concept works with public transport as well, not just your road. So let's have a little look at that as well. We can possibly start to piece together another sort of internal uh, inner city uh, metro ring, which we can align our stations as we need them. Place in a few. Of course, switch them out for content creator stations if you want. And that's very much what I do as we come in to kind of fill each of these downtown frames now with transport hubs, skylines, office parks, 
central parks, whatever you want to put in your downtown, you can come in and change these stations out and customize their placement a little bit more. But as long as you have sort of the initial frame there for right now, it's almost like a reminder that, yes, okay, you know, I do want some sort of major metro infrastructure over here at some point. Okay. Wonderful. So, again, we can get these hooked up with road guidelines and free forms. Everyone's going to be tremendously happy. Okay. So this is what it's all about, right? Just piecing together individual blocks, individual designs and builds and whatnot. And then you can just start to flesh out sort of your initial concepts and designs, start to think about where different things are going to sit within the build. And then you'll soon have a downtown that is much more customized to you and exactly how you like to build it. However, guys, that does feel like a good place for a detailing time lapse. I'm going to carry on bringing in lots of little uh, local road networks like this within the main arterial frames. Uh, continue to refine a lot of the terraforming here to get rid of this extreme brown texture. I bring in lots and lots of repeated ring road decoration, including the overgrown part here with rocks where all the networks pass by. And I repeated tree patterns to run with the keys. And also access onto the keys that is a little bit nicer than this one. Uh, so people can actually use the walkability uh, function of the keys themselves. And then other little bits of sort of detailing that we're also fond of. Uh, fences, walkability, elevated pathways. I also carry on bringing the monorail system into the downtown area as well, which is currently ending here. So again, this is just going to be another network that comes straight over. I'm going to keep it parallel with this road so I can continue to add stops and yet again more metro and monorail convergence because we've already seen how effective that is in a low density area. Imagine how busy that's going to be in a high density area like this, right? It's going to be great. Yeah, and then all the little bits of uh, detailing bits and pieces. But otherwise, let's decorate the downtown road network frame and we'll be right back.
Okay guys, that is going to do it for today. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, likes, comments and shares below really do help me out. Equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. I can't stress how important it is that you prepare for a downtown. Please do not just start zoning it on the edge of your suburbia where you've already been building. You need to prepare for these things. Otherwise, your traffic will die. You are going to be placing lots of high density and lots of unique buildings. So they're just sim magnets. So many people will come here. So important that we factor in lots of road connections and public transport connections too. Plus walkability, which we have done with the walkable seawalkies. I can hope you agree. The finished product is actually quite a nice build within itself. Next episode, we will start building the main skyline itself and then several other uh, subsequent downtown builds will follow that. So if you have any specific requests for a downtown build, and maybe you're struggling with something in your own city to put in the downtown, please leave them in the comments of this episode and I will try and factor them into the Noobs Guide downtown as best I can. Do hang around for the outro Taj. There was a ton of detail and you guys wouldn't have seen, but otherwise I will shut up and we'll leave it there. Just thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.